presentation is on the binomial option pricing model. My name is Pat Obi, Professor of Finance at Purdue University, Calumet. First off, as the name suggests, this option pricing model relies on the binomial probability distribution. And as you know, this distribution is a discrete probability distribution being that the outcomes of the values of a, uh, of a binomial variable are countable. However, additionally, those outcomes can only be one of two types, either success or failure. And um, these are not used in the literal sense. It means that there are only two mutually exclusive outcomes, success or failure, big or small, up or down, boy or girl. If you flip a coin, you can only get a head or a tail. For example, you can't flip a coin and observe a head and a tail uh, simultaneously. And so the application in stock pricing is that if you invest in a stock in the next time period, the stock would either go up in price or go down in price. And as a result, it observes a binomial behavior. So now, in terms of option pricing, the binomial model relies on the concept of a riskless hedge. And this is kind of like how it works. I set out this motivation here to help you um, grasp it, at least in the um, elementary sense of it. Consider yourself, all right? You wish to hedge a portfolio of stocks. So you buy a stock, and why would you want to hedge? Well, you want to hedge because you're afraid the stock would go down in price. And so to hedge, upon buying the stock, you write a call. Now, this is a type of covered call hedge. Now, remember, if you write a call and the stock price goes down, the buyer of that call would not exercise, and so you get to keep the call premium that you receive from selling that call. And so if the stock, well let's look at this first, goes down in price, the hedger loses on the stock but gains on the option. Now if on the flip side the stock goes up, well you will lose, oh, sorry, you will lose on your, that's correct, on your option but then you gain on the stock and so you do have an offset which is what provides the hedge that we speak to here. So now, continuing though, in the context of the binomial model, you're going to create this hedge portfolio. And the term portfolio is used in the generic sense, meaning uh, a position that comprises two or more um, individual instruments. And so here, the first instrument is a long position in the stock, meaning you buy a stock and the other is a short position in the call, meaning you sell a call. And this is going to be created, this portfolio, such that you end up with a riskless position. How does that work? Well, in the sense that the value of this hedge portfolio of stocks and calls would be the same, regardless of whether the stock goes up or down. So that's what this is suggesting here, right? in that the value of the portfolio when the stock goes up is the same as it would be when the stock go if the stock were to go down. Now if the portfolio is riskless in that the value would be the same whether or not the stock goes up or down, then such a portfolio should offer a return equal to the risk free rate of return in equilibrium. And so the logic here is if you set up a portfolio such that regardless of how the stock price moves you would wind up with the same value then such a portfolio since the outcome is known would offer a risk-free rate of return there is no risk involved in, in such a position and if one can construct such a hedge portfolio then in equilibrium it should offer you the same rate of return as any other riskless asset should. And so given the five parameters describing an option, the price of a stock, S, volatility, sigma, ec uh, exercise price or strike price, E, 
time to expiration t and finally the risk-free interest rate one can actually calculate the price of an option satisfying this equilibrium condition now the first scholars in finance to take a stab at this are Cox, Ross, and Rubinstein in 1979 in their seminal study entitled Option Pricing, a Simplified Approach, published in the Journal of Financial Economics. This very powerful study sets the path for determining the theoretical price of an option under some rather simplistic assumptions, but also assumptions that are reasonable in the sense that although the model is um, quite simple to comprehend, provides uh, a rather robust um, option pricing results, as you're about to see. But in this introductory presentation, we explain the motivation, beginning with the methodology that they employed. Here, the valuation process is iterative using a binomial tree. Now, this binomial tree, as I'm going to show shortly, starts um, at each end point of the lattice. You know, the lattice are the forks that, ma that mark the um, nature of the tree. The end point of a lattice is called a node. And then you're going to work backwards through the tree up to the first node, which is where you determine the value of the option. So here's an illustration of it, of a binomial tree. So here, there are three time periods shown. Let's say a stock starts out at the price of 20. So based on the binomial concept, the outcome in the next time period would either be up or down. So it can either go up to, say, $24 or down to $16. Here, um, we deliberately assume an upside move of 1.2 and a downside move of 0.8. Now then, if it moves up to 24 in the first time period, then in the second time period it can either move up to 28.8 or down to 19.20. Now in the same vein, if it moved down to 16 in the first time period, then in the second time period it can either move up to 19.20 or down to 12.8. And finally, in the third time period, you see again how the lattice moves. So these are the lattices, the arrows that you see here. And the end point of the arrow where each of these possible stock prices are determined refers to the node. So in option pricing, we're going to say, well, let's start from here, for example, where the stock ends up at 34.56 or 23.04. And let's determine the intrinsic value of the option. And then we're going to work it backwards to time two and then work it backwards again to time one and finally backwards to time zero which is where we are and that's the point that's the point in time where we seek to determine the theoretical price of an option a numeric example that shows how this is determined will be pursued in the next video entitled the one period binomial model